<laughs> Hello, I'm Steve with Just Dreaming. This is Captain Katya. And we want to introduce her because uh, she's going to be crossing the Atlantic with us. But also, uh, she's going to be starting up her own YouTube channel and uh, sharing some of her adventures and knowledge. And uh, uh, we found her to be a, a vast, uh, a very useful source of information in Europe. And uh, now we're in the Canary Islands, uh, waiting for a weather passage to go to go to uh, the Caribbean. And I know I don't pronounce it correctly. How do you pronounce Caribbean? Caribbean? No, the Caribbean's correct. Caribbean is correct. Okay, I I always say Caribbean. And you say Caribbean, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Anyway, you got me saying it correctly now. And uh, pronunciation's important. So um, anyway. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, where, where are you from? I'm from Ukraine, from Donetsk. Um, I was raised there, and uh, when I was 23, I moved to India, where I lived for seven years. And then I've been traveling a lot and living in different countries, and then I end up now being a skipper. So you went to uh, so you went to India and uh, now you're a, a math major, yes. right? Okay. To teach, to teach math. To teach math. Did you enjoy that or? Oh yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. What part of India were you at? It's West Bengal. West Bengal. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not sure I know where that is. It's but... where Calcutta is. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. But Calcutta is West Bengal capital. Cap uh, Calcutta. That's a big city. It's a very big city. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. So would you recommend uh, traveling to India for anyone or is that I something? I do recommend, but you need to know it uh, in which way uh, you need to know culture. And this is what I was doing the last three and a half years. I was taking tourists all over India, so I know it very well. Really? Yes. Wow. So... Yeah, so if you need someone to give you some tips on India, get a hold of Katya, that's for sure. Um, so did you like teaching? I do. Yeah, I do. yeah. Are you going to do more of that at some point? or? I don't think so. Uh, it's all right in the past. Really? You only I will do with my kids <laughs> when I will have my kids. Then, okay, yes. yeah, yeah. So. But I, I don't have any plans to come back to teaching anymore. All right. Yeah. But then you went out and got your skipper's license. Is that like the next step after India? Or oh, what, no. What it was, the next step was Ecuador. I was living uh, in Ecuador. Uh, I went to, do, to open a banana export company. And I was doing that for one and a half year. I went to Ecuador without knowing anybody, learned language, learned Spanish in three months, and started a business. Okay. Started a business exporting bananas. Exporting bananas. All right. Okay. And then what happened? And then business didn't work that well. Uh, it's a long story, but I came back to Ukraine for a few months and I went traveling uh, Spain and Portugal with my mom by car. And I really like Barcelona. I was like, that would be a great place to live. And it happens. And before even I came back to Ukraine, I was offered a job there in Barcelona. Oh, okay. What did you do there? Management, oh. let's say real estate management. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. okay. Wow. So you manage like rental properties or what? Or just uh... mm, more like uh, doing the renovation of the house, you know, like getting documents and all stuff done, uh, communicating with uh, our architectures and doing lots of lots of stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of paperwork when you don't want to do anything in Spain. Oh yeah, it's a lot in tax <laughs> ages. <laughs> anything in Spain involves a lot of paperwork. Yeah. I, I've never seen so much paperwork. <laughs> Our experience is similar on that. Oh man. Anyway. Um, yeah. And then COVID started. I came back to Ukraine uh, and uh, I was living there with my mom and also traveling a lot. And last year, 
uh, I went to Montenegro to visit my cousin's wedding and they have a yacht and I was driving this yacht before the first time that I went to Montenegro like before I went to Ecuador and last year I had this idea that why not to uh, get a license for a skipper and uh, being a skipper because this gives you a great opportunity for travel and uh, visit new places, meeting new people. This was always my dream. So this is what I did. I did uh, get, I went to school in Montenegro to study, to get this license. It's a quite quick uh, course for 11 days, you already get a license, and it was very intense course. Mm -hmm. But then the most important is practice. Mm -hmm. uh, so I found one boat that I like, first I was helping my cousin for like around months and a half, something like that, uh, with, with the day charters. and. Um, then I went to Turkey. From Turkey, uh, I helped uh, another friend to deliver, like, get his boat from uh, Turkey to Montenegro. That's around 800 miles, mm -hmm. and so, uh, like, and so on. <laughs> so from Montenegro to Turkey, how did that trip go? From Turkey to Montenegro. Oh, Turkey to Montenegro. Yes. How did that almost. trip go? It was eight days trip because we were also waiting for a weather window. It was tough. Was it? <laughs> it was really tough. It's through the old Greece, basically islands. It's awful. I, I don't advise anybody going to Greece. <laughs> really? The Greek also, islands? Greek islands are so unexpected with the weather. It's just crazy. Any t anytime we get near islands, it throws the wind into a weird, can't predict yeah, the direction. Yeah, you can't predict, and it's uh, 2,000 islands there. Yeah. So it's so, this is what was happening, it was crazy, just crazy. We were going to go to the Greek islands in, and uh, coming here, that was always going to be the plan. And uh, But we joined a Mediterranean sailing group. And they, those people were having so many problems with the Greek government, with the islands, with windstorms. Oh, yeah. We just said, no, we're not doing yeah, this. Yeah, that's, you know? uh, that's good that you, you did that because uh, when I was studying uh, as a skipper to get the skipper license, our teacher told, like, if you want to go, like, to get experience, don't go to Greece. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, why I went there, uh, like Turkey, because I went with a very experienced sailors that who, who had like more than ten years experience who did world crossing around the world. So I was like, that's a very experienced person. I knew I would learn a lot of stuff from him, and it's everything gonna be uh, all good. Uh -huh. So I didn't even look the weather forecast. And first two days there was no wind. We were motoring. And then the wind started like uh, coming up, and in one point, with the mainland crossing, when we were going from the main, like from the islands to the mainland, and it was like one period that wind was 35 knots in our face. Oh. And basically, all trip was wind in our face, and I didn't like it at all. He didn't plan it very good, <laughs> he did, did he? plan it but he was like I, I don't care i just want to like go and i was like uh, why you didn't wait for two days like it would be all gone right right yeah no you got you know you just gotta wait you gotta wait until the weather's going your way i mean that's all there is to it there's no reason to get out there and get no. yourself into a fight and beat no. beat the hell out of your boat right i mean that's the thing so yeah so then uh what other trips have you done uh, the next, uh, I was planning to go in a catamaran, uh, uh, 11 meters, a small catamaran from Cadiz to Seychelles, crossing means whole Mediterranean, uh, Red Sea, Indian Ocean, down to Seychelles. But, and I went there uh, to Cadiz, we spent more than months preparing a boat, 
although it was supposed to be prepared, but oh, yeah. always something wrong was wrong. And also, what I fi- found out that in Spain you don't expect uh, people to lie, like when it's uh, something serious, like you know, fixing something. But they do. For example, like what happened. Uh, this my friends now they ask to change impellers in the motor and they gave like new impellers and to do service for the motors and then we are going to go <laughs> and start an engine and we see that water is not coming ah. uh, so so this is the mechanics that they hired to yes, work on the engine yeah and they paid 300 euros for each engine to have the impellers change Impellers and uh, feel like all the um, yeah, service change right? the oil, all service, yeah, basically. right, fuel filters, all that, stuff. yeah, yeah, right, 300. It's a lot, yeah, that is a lot, it's a, right, uh, for each engine, yeah. So, and they got basically well, what we like, we noticed that it's some problem with impeller, so we open it uh-huh. and we see that it's completely trash, yeah. So, they put some old impellers i don't know basically they didn't even open the they probably they never changed them at all they probably no. just left the old impellers yeah, yeah so yeah. and it was all gone it was like trash like really yeah, right. so don't we, trust anybody if you oh, can yeah. do something by yourself yeah better do it by yourself i don't let anyone touch my boat <laughs> <laughs> nobody touches my boat do they you've been with us for what a month now right yeah yeah you can see nobody touches my boat but me as far as uh, fixing the boat that's, yes. that's my job it's better it's better yeah i know what i did and didn't do and and uh, those impellers you know people don't realize about impellers even if you even if you don't run the motor at all for one year, you still have to replace the impeller. Yes, because it's a rubber, like rubber. Yeah, it's rubber. It just it just falls. It just apart. falls apart. All right, it doesn't hold its shape. So yes. yeah. So now, so you were going to go from S- Spain. Uh, what? How how were you going to get to Seychelles? You were going to go through the whole Mediterranean in Gibraltar and going down basically around South um, South Africa. Yes. Oh, wow. Now that would have been... No, not South Africa. No, sorry. Mediterranean. It's entering Mediterranean. Yeah. Not through the Atlantic Ocean. No. Okay. okay. Entering Mediterranean. Oh. Going... Uh, oh, you were in the north of Spain. Yes. We oh. were in Cadiz. You've been in Cadiz. You know where it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. Yeah. In Cadiz, going Gibraltar, then uh, South... Uh, no, North Africa. Okay. And then enter Suez, uh, Suez Canal. Oh, the Suez Canal, yes, right? And then the go to Red this. Sea. Oh yeah, past all the pirates. Oh, past all the pirates. Oh, that's but, a crazy on an eleven meter yes, catamaran. Yes, this, this is an is, eleven meter catamaran. It's the same size, basically. It's same size boat. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Gail, we should do that trip. <laughs> <laughs> She's over here shaking her head. No, no, <laughs> through the whole Mediterranean. <laughs> and the med and the Mediterranean to me is behind me now. Okay, it, we, we've had some experiences. Well, you know I'm big on on pronunciation, so she pronounces. Uh, I pronounce it Cadiz because that's the Spanish. I'm trying to do the Spanish way, and you pronounce it Cadiz. Cadiz. Cadiz, yeah. Cadiz. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, yeah. yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, all right. But, so, okay, so I completely understand what you're saying. Now, that that yeah. would have been, so then you just didn't do that trip. We tried to do that, but uh, the owner, the lady, she started having really serious back problems. Oh, that's the one. Oh, yeah. yeah. And... Uh, uh, Basically, what I needed, I needed to send her to back to France because what we found out in other stuff that in Cadiz, if you're sick, better don't get sick because they they will just throw you away from the hospital. This is what happened. Really? Yeah, we went to the hospital. She got three shots of morphine. Yeah. And they they just basically throw her out, and wow. she was still in pain. And it was so full experience. Now, is, was she a Spanish citizen? No, she's French. French citizen so in Spain. Said, yeah. 
but so the the uh, the EU health insurance doesn't take no. care of you of one from one uh, country to another. I think you need to, to have some special insurance for that, and she didn't have like she didn't, she had French insurance. So I just told her that it doesn't work if you want to get cured. Like basically, you need to go to a pub a private hospital, and that was crazy expensive okay very yeah. expensive yeah. so what we did i insisted her to going back to france to get to go to the hospital because it was really bad she couldn't even move or go into the bathroom it was so much pain for her so she went to uh, paris and uh, the doctor uh, we started traveling down we went to barbate and uh, uh, we were waiting for a weather window to close Gibraltar and then she called and told that the trip is cancelled because her daughter told that she, for six months or a year she can't do such kind of travel. Oh. So, so they left canceled. the boat there and the trip was cancelled? Yes. And I see. Now when I got a hold of you, you were in the north of Spain. Right. Yeah, I was. Uh, it was uh, that this uh, trip was supposed to be last year, and there was a lot of stuff happening later. And then I was planning to go. The next trip was to go from Ibiza to U.S. last year uh, on a monohull, fifty meters. And I went to Ibiza. We spent there a week. We started journey. We came to Cartagena, uh -huh. and the trip was canceled again. Now that's. <laughs> 50 meters or 15 meters? 15. 15 meters. Okay. Well, one five. I thought one five. 50 meters. No, no, Holy no, no. 15. <laughs> 15. <laughs> okay. Well, 15 meters is a good size. Oh, that's a it's bigger boat. That's a big boat. Yeah, right, right. It's a good so, size. Yeah. Nice boat. Yeah. Monohull. But the trip was canceled again, uh, not depending oh, on me. That's the boat you pointed out to me in yes. Cartagena yes. when we were there. Because mm -hmm. yes. it's still it's there. It's still there. It's still yeah. there. Right, right. Yeah, but the trip was cancelled because of um, technical issues and crew issues, let's say. Uh, we were coming uh, from Ibiza to Cartagena, facing a 45 knots wind. Everybody was like really seasick. Mm -hmm. And it was five person, me, owner, owner's granddaughter, who was 16 years old, uh, and friend of the owner who has like asthma or something and he was smoking so at the end it was only me and the owner who were always keeping a night watch and like doing everything because um, oh and it was another girl from Sweden who didn't even appear for a minute on the on the bridge yeah nothing really yeah yeah so at the end it was also some problems with autopilot and the owner told that uh, we can't do that. Mm. Yeah. So again, it was cancelled. <laughs> so I came back to Ukraine. I spent a few months in Ukraine and then war started. Yeah. When war started, I came to Barcelona, uh, staying there for a few months, and then I decided to come back to my sailing because it was summer coming, summer season here in the Mediterranean. So I found a job uh, on a catch, 22 meters, uh, from, and we did, I was staying there for five months mm -hmm. and preparing boat first for a travel and then we did a travel from Spain to Sardinia where we stayed for two and a half months and going around, visiting all the islands and then came back to Spain. Huh? So, yeah. So well, that was a good really, trip then. That was a really good trip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and before we, we met, uh, I was going to go to another big trip from Spain, it's near Barcelona, uh, to England. Oh. And a very beautiful also catch, 20 meters catch, 20 meters. Uh -huh. And we started the journey, we went to Portugal and again the trip was cancelled because of the weather conditions in the uh, Bay of Biscayne. That's uh, the Bay of Biscayne, if you don't know, that's, that's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you gotta. <laughs> that's true. That's true. This guy is so like uh, if weather was there up to ten meters waves. Uh huh. So it's just a crazy like you yeah. have to be insane. That's thirty foot waves if you, you if you don't do the conversion. Yeah. To 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 go there. So. Yeah. yeah. It's it's uh, we. Is that the ca channel between? Uh, that's before England. you get to England. Before you get before. to England. But you got to cross it. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, I mean, every time I looked at it, it was like hell on earth. Who would want to do that? I mean, yeah, you got to be, go. you gotta be a serious <laughs> sailor. You want to do that. I was planning to do that. Probably a 20-foot like... catch is the right boat for that kind of work. You it know? is. It is. And it's so nice, uh, stable, good yeah, that's, boat. It's yeah, just like if you meter. get to like, you know, this kind of weather conditions when you have... Uh, 35 knots more wind, uh, you fight with it. You don't have any choice. But if you know that this thing happened, you don't go there. Right. When it's just, it's, it's not clever. Right, right. You definitely can't sail through that, can you? You, you have to tack. You're just, you're just in for a fight. You're just in for a serious fight, the fight of your life. And then, well, when we sailed from Horta down the Portugal coast, so the wind is constantly going with us, it was a very strong wind. Mm -hmm. You can only imagine what that would be like trying to go against that mm -hmm. wind. I mean, because it's, it's like the wind that's going to take us to the United States. It's, it's actually a trade wind. It's actually almost always there, and it's, yes. and it's always strong. So, yeah, it'd be very, very difficult. Yeah, uh, how the skipper that was in that boat told that uh, to go there, you will not only um, can damage boat, but uh, it's also you make a danger for everybody who is present there. And it's only like, you know, you go from uh, inside the boat to the helm, you can get them like, really severe damage mm -hmm. like to yourself right, mm -hmm. right. you can so yeah. it's yeah. not wise yeah well we haven't had an exactly smooth ride out here to the canary islands so you know i mean you can get damage just coming in and out of the passageway on this boat and it's a nice big passageway you know but it's still it's you know the, you know, the boat throws you around you're being yeah. thrown around constantly you know yeah. we have places to grab and yeah. it's closed. This spa uh, mm -hmm. uh, space is closed. There, it's open. Mm -hmm. Right. In a bigger boat. And uh, like, yeah, yeah it's uh, like this is what you were talking like about. Also, that is, is the sketch was completely open outside. It doesn't have any. So uh, there's no weather protection no, at all. Not, not you step protection. out the companion way. You're in. Yes, you're, you're in, in the, the air. air. Yeah, That's in true. the air, the sun, the wind, the rain, whatever. Yeah, and when you have the swell, like ten meters or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we put our hard top on this boat and put the covers all around it, the previous owner used to wear uh, goggles, <laughs> scuba goggles. <laughs> when the rain would come, you know, he put on his scuba goggles. <laughs> Wind too! My gosh, you can you can really burn yeah. your eyes yeah. with extra. Yeah, you can. Because I can see where that would have come in handy. Yeah, in it's handy. better it's better than nothing. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. all right. Yeah. Well, anyway, so we're we've made a nine day passage to uh, to the Canary Islands from Cartagena. Uh, from Cartagena, and then it was like three or four days before that, right? No that, more than that. Was it? Yeah, it was uh, uh, two days uh, to uh, Castellon. Yeah, and from Castellon it was three nights. Oh really? To get yes. to Cartagena? Yeah. Oh well, how much time flies? So, it does. I I didn't remember. So that, that was either. yeah. That so we time. basically you have been fourteen days on. Well, the, you know, uh, when you're up day and night, you know, you can't, you can't count days because you yeah, didn't sleep. Yeah right. The <laughs> day days just meld one and you're just you're just going through the the motions of the next thing to do, <laughs> whatever the next thing to do is. So anyway, we are going to. Uh, Probably look for a weather window to go to Cape Verde, and then from Cape Verde to uh, Barbados. Barbados, yes, Barbados. Barbados. I We're... pronounce it Barbados, not Barbados. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter how you pronounce. And maybe it. She's better on the pronunciation. What? Maybe I'm wrong. Where is Grenada? Is... Then, then we'll go to Grenada, but Barbados is the closest. Is the closest land. Mm, I haven't so, even seen that so, island. Anyway. So. 
So Katya is gonna uh, get her own get her own uh, channel going here, and this will probably be her introduction video. And uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, we do we do sit down and and uh, weather planning together, and uh, kind of try to show you how we're gonna plan that and what we're gonna use for sails and paths and and that kind of thing. So that'll that'll be on her channel. So you'll. You'll get to know how the 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 backstory of of how you how you plan a passage or how you continue a passage. So, and uh, and what you what you do when you're on an island when you can't do the passage? You well, we get a sea. lot of that. We get a lot of time, just like she's saying, the broken boat time, broken boat time. We get a lot of broken boat time and uh, and, and a lot of weather window waiting time. So. And time to explore the city, the island, uh, yeah. the place mm -hmm. you are in. She's got it all planned out on this island. We're, we're at, I, I know I won't say it right, so I'm going to let you say the island we're at. Lanzarote. Lanzarote. Okay, so that's Lanzarote. in the Canary Islands. And if you don't know, she doesn't agree, but I think the Canary Islands look like canaries. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do too. And one of the canaries has an egg. Yeah, there's an egg. <laughs> <laughs> so they look like little birds. That's why they named the Canary Islands. These Spanish people, they knew what they were doing. So if you ever wondered why they named it the Canary Islands, yeah. that's what we think. Yeah. That's our... Now your mom is still in Ukraine. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so, and in Kiev. Kiev. Yeah. So you talk to her a lot. And yeah. So that's that's a concern. But, um, and what was her profession? She was... My mom? Yeah. She's an engineer. An engineer. Uh, but now she's a psychologist. She just got her second degree this January. She really? Has a master degree, yeah. Wow. In cool. Hmm. Her 57. Well, what does she think about her? Never too old to get a degree. No, 57. I, I plan on getting a degree when we get out. Good, <laughs> good. I am also planning to get my degree. What are you going to do? In your... I have different ideas. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, anyway, we'll, we're taking it all. We're all taking life one day at a time here. So that's that's what we're doing. And uh, but uh, anyway, thanks for joining us on SV Just Dreaming, and we're looking forward to getting Katya's new YouTube channel up and running, which will be called Captain Katya. Is that right? Yes. All right. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. We're gonna get you going. All right. Thanks for joining us. Bye.